What's up everybody? Welcome back to Make It Custom. I'm Carl Fisher. In this video, we are gonna get into some metal shaping. So if you've been following along, we built the wire buck, we made the paper patterns, and now it's time to do some shrinking. I have traced out our patterns onto this metal. You can see where the shrinks are in the paper pattern. I'm not actually gonna use those exact places as reference. Basically, what I'm trying to do here now is I can see where the shrinks go to, like the depth of the shrink. On this one, it'll make Make more sense. I've got deep ones here. I've got shallow ones here. When I'm trying to make, you know, a part that's nice and round, that's very even, I want to have obviously an even roadmap as to where to shrink. So those two depths are the stack. If you've ever heard of stack shrinking, it just basically means that to create a shape that continues to curve like that, like a hemispherical sort of shape, any kind of compound curve really, you know, closer to the edge is going to take more shrinking than further in on that rounded radius of the panel that you're trying to get. So for this right here, I've got deep ones. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna actually draw a circle there and a circle here, and I'm gonna make even marks so that I know that my shrinks are consistent, that I can count them. I'm gonna do, you know, however many deeps and then probably double shallower ones to create that stack. As a rule of thumb, there's almost twice as many in each layer as you go, but that obviously changes on whatever shape it is. So here we go. I'm gonna draw these out, cut these out, and we're gonna get to the power hammer. All right. Now we got these pieces cut out. What uh, I want to do first before we get to the power hammer is I want to give a little bit of form. All these panels need to have a bit of a roll in them. A little trick that I use, I've seen it on the internet. Guys use a rubber piece of inner tube for their English wheel top roller and then have their curved lower wheel press into it and it gives a soft place for it to add form. There's no shape being added there. You're not stretching anything out because it's a soft pad. So what I like to use, just because I don't have an inner tube, and also I would, I see that like the inner tube kind of comes off. I use tape. I just uh, roll a bunch of tape, Gorilla tape, on the, uh, on the top die of my English wheel. And that creates a soft enough um, surface to press the lower die into. I've got my, uh, my radius gauge. I just check what radius I'm looking for, and then I just match it to my lower anvil on the English wheel. So I'm gonna do that now. We're gonna add some, just a bit of basic shape into all these pieces, or sorry, form into all these pieces. And then we will start with this top distributor cove, doing some deep shrinks and stacking on the Shape-O-Matic thumbnail dies. See, it creates that form quite, quite quickly. Works really good. Along, I'm going to switch over to the radius dies and just clean this up a little bit so that we can check it accurately on our wire buck. OK, 
Okay, that seems to be the closest radius. That's the die we're gonna use. And then of course, the top die is flat. All right, at this point now, it's looking pretty good. We've got definitely quite a bit of our shape in there. When I check it with our radius profile gauge, it still has a bit more to go, which is good. We don't wanna to go too hard too quick and then have to try and back step, which is a lot harder than forward stepping in, in metal shaping. I, I just wanna take a minute to tell you guys this. I don't consider myself an expert. This is how I do stuff. You know, there's gonna be a lot of other information out there. I'm not, you know, the holy grail. I look up to a lot of guys that uh, I'm sure you've heard of before and, you know, bow down to their skills. This is, uh, this is still my metal shaping journey, but the things that I do know, this is some of the basic stuff. I'm just gonna share with you guys. So, it's how I do it. Don't take it for gospel, just take it for whatever, whatever it is. So I'm gonna do a lot more shrinking on this and try and tighten up this curve. Here's the other beautiful thing about a wire buck is that you can really see up inside here how far away you are from your buck. So if it was a wooden buck that you maybe couldn't see up inside there, you'd have to be kind of feeling for it and uh, and checking from with gauges instead. But here it's really easy to see. You can just look underneath. I'm gonna go back into zoom mode, do a bunch more shaping, and then we'll have a look at it when we get a little closer. All right, I just want to take a second to show you um, how I'm checking it against the buck here. Here's the panel. It's, it's getting some pretty good shape in it. There's a little bit more curve here than we've got going this way right now. So obviously I've got the radius gauge. I can sort of check our progress, what's got enough, what needs a little more. So when I'm setting it on there, I can see that I'm, I'm, I'm pretty close. I'm pretty tight right here, but we've got a bit of space over here and it <clears throat> shows on the radius gauge too that, that this needs a little bit more shape. So because this is sticking out a little bit here on the curved part of it, it's not just the form that needs to go in it. I need to take a little bit of material out right there by means of shrinking. So next spot I'm gonna attack is, is right here and here, uh, just to bring these sides in. And then uh, I'll throw in the English wheel again and try and roll a little bit more form into uh, the flatter areas of the panel. And then we'll check it again. shrinking on the power hammer and planishing on the power hammer and we've got this shape looking really good. I went back on the English wheel and transferred some form back into this. So we're checking it on the buck. It's looking really good. You can see underneath the wire frame here. It's nice and tight everywhere. Now that it's this good, I went ahead and planished it so that we got this nice surface transfer. This is as far as we're gonna go with this buck for this piece. The next steps will be actually going to the car and trimming it to fit. I'll show you how to fix it in the car. So 
So we've got a little bit of edge trimming to do, which is what we wanted anyway. And, uh, and the shape fits really, really nice. So I'm gonna go ahead and make the next two pieces and then we'll start fitting those together with each other and mapping out our design for bead rolling. So that's coming up next. All right, I'm gonna throw a little bead roll into this panel so that it matches the rest of the stuff. Pretty much the same as any other bead rolling, but just no table, because we need to be able to wrap it around. I think I'm gonna go around one more time. It's pretty hard metal now that it's been shaped, so it's gonna take a little extra. I'm also trying to add a little bit of pressure here just to make sure the panel's going through flat, not bending down. The table usually keeps the panel like that, but with no table, you have to sort of fight it. All right, check that out. See how nicely that rolled in there. Don't forget to subscribe, click notifications, like and comment, share this. If you enjoyed it, I hope you liked the video and we'll catch you on the next one.